As you can plainly see here in this image, the Sony Xperia Z Ultra actually somewhat dwarfs the Note 3 and is closer to the tablet form factor. Indeed, the Z Ultra brings a flat profile that gives it a black slate look and performs very well as a tablet. Covered almost completely of glass, the Sony phone comes with the signature Xperia silver power button and is a very thin device. Handling the Z Ultra is a lot easier than its size may make it look, as the thinness and rigid sides make it pretty easy to position. This is far from a one-hand device, however, as the form factor lends itself to mostly landscape usage. Compare that to the Galaxy Note 3. That is a little smaller, but still warrants two-hand operation. This is primarily due to the inclusion of the S Pen, which is definitely the Note's trump card. The Galaxy Note 3 comes with a couple great design choices of its own, as Samsung did away with the glossy plastic that many of its products employ, and this time comes with a textured plastic that looks and feels a lot better. It isn't as thin as the Ultra, and has a more rounded look, but its angles are a little more decisive this time around. While landscape usage is definitely in its way, you'll primarily be using the Note 3 in portrait with the S Pen. It's in the screens that both of these phones get their larger sizes. The Note 3 has gotten a 0.2 inch increase from its predecessor due to slimmer bezels. Its Super AMOLED display is a lot like the Galaxy S4 screen that brought great saturation and colors, only bigger. It's a great screen that continues Samsung's display tradition. The same 1080p resolution is somewhat blown up on the Z Ultra, which sports a 6.5 inch triluminous display backed by the X Reality engine. It handles the darker tones of Xperia's Timescape UI very well. When it comes to media, you get a great experience either way. Even if the Z Ultra doesn't make the colors pop out as much as the Note 3 screen, it still feels like a small Sony TV in practice. Both of these phones sport the same great processing package. The Snapdragon 800 clocked in at 2.2 GHz with the Adreno 330 employed for graphics. While the Xperia Z Ultra definitely benefits from the speed increases, the Note 3 does have one more gigabyte of RAM to compensate for all of its S Pen and multitasking functionalities. And while the 32 milliamp hour battery of the Note 3 is replaceable, the 3050 milliamp hour unit in the Z Ultra is not. Both do come with expandable memory, however. The camera section doesn't benefit the Z Ultra that moves more toward the tablet form. Its 8 megapixel shooter brings the nice superior auto-powered interface but doesn't have a flash, nor the many features that are found in the Galaxy Camera app. The 13 megapixel shooter on the Note 3 is capable of a ton of different creative photography modes and should sport the same great quality as the shooter in the Galaxy S4. Finally, in software, it's another instance of the typical dichotomy. The super robust and feature-packed TouchWiz up against a more simplistic and classical competitor. The Note 3 not only brings with it the colorful TouchWiz look, but also adds in a ton of navigation features that the S4 had, and then adds in the S Pen. Indeed, with the S Pen, you can write notes, contextually plug information, do some scrapbooking, and overall have a great stylus experience. It's an operating system that might prove a little overwhelming for some, however. Contrast this with the Xperia's Timescape, the user interface that keeps everything simpler with a somewhat stock-looking UI. Sony's additions of small apps and even its own apps like the Walkman bolster what is pretty much a classical experience. And so, there you have it. Two of the biggest players in the game, and while one might focus on a kind of personal assistant experience, the other is definitely one of the best big screens available for media. Your personal style might end up dictating which one you get, but both sport their larger sizes supremely.